Let's take a look at this power worksheet. Um, big shout out to Miss Mardoyan for helping me out with the answer key. I, I lost mine and um, she saved me a ton of time by giving me hers. So thank you. Um, so let's take a look at this uh, power through this worksheet. You guys get it? Yeah, yeah, no? All right. So Sylvester Stallone exerts 300 joules of work on a barbell and lifts at three, 3.5 meters in the air. How much force did he exert to lift the barbell? Um, this one's nice. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward one. Work equals force times distance. Um, we know that we're dealing with a work problem because, first of all, it even, it even tells us how much how much force when well, we don't have force as the part of the power formula so we know that we're going for the work formula also tells us straight up um, how much how much work he actually did so this is a good formula to go for um, also we don't know the time that it took him to do this so that's why we can't go with this other formula over here All right, so that leaves us with work equals force times distance we know our work is 300 joules Distance is three and a half meters. Solve from there, 300 divided by three and a half, so you can get F by itself. Leaves us at 85.71 newtons, or you could have rounded it off to something like 85.7, um, maybe even 86, I suppose, but that would probably be do, uh, a little bit overdoing the rounding. All right, number two. Seal slides at a constant speed with 80 joules of work uh, is done on it. Determine the force of friction pushing on the seal if it seal slides a distance of 15 meters. This is another work equals force times distance problem um, because we know the amount of work that was done on the seal. That's that 80 joules over here. We're trying to determine the force, uh, so I don't know F quite yet, and we do know that the seal slides a distance of 15 meters, so we're left with just force to solve for. And of course, when we plug it in there, we get 80 divided by 15, so that we can get F by itself equals 5.33 newtons. Or again, something along the lines of 5.3 newtons would be fine as well. All right, uh, so let's take a look at number three. Uh, two bears are hiking through the forest. The first one's exerting a force of 45 newtons. All right, so if you are somebody that likes to sort of box off your your numbers or box off your variables and start throwing in variables for it before getting into the problem, this one can be a little bit confusing because we'll, as we'll see in a minute. So we're exerting a force of 50, 45 newtons, sorry, for a distance of 1,500 meters. Second one is exerting force of 33 newtons over a distance of 1,700 meters. Which one does more work, the first or the second? So it's like, if I start underlining and highlighting stuff, right away it seems like this can be a pretty intimidating problem or fairly overwhelming because it's like I've got a couple of forces, got a couple of distances, I'm looking for first, second, like what the heck? Um, but in physics, you probably would have seen by now at, at this point in the year, um, pretty much every time I'm talking about an object, it's going to have its, its own formula associated with it. So having two objects, two bears in this case, uh, each one is going to have its own, own formula. So we're going to end up with doing two problems. So then it becomes a little bit less intimidating. It's like, oh, well, I just got two problems then, and I just have to compare because it's asking me for who does more work, the first or the second bear. So when I plug in the force and distance for the first bear, 45 and 1,500, and then I plug in the force and distance for the second bear, 33 and 1,700, do my math, come up with this 67,500 joules. That's not my answer. 56,100 joules, that's not my answer either. My answer is, in comparison to each other, which one does the most work? And that's bear one because it has the most. So that's why we got first bear as the final answer. All right, number four, a student does 25,000 joules of work to complete her homework. Determine the power the student exudes uh, during this period of time. So I like that word. It's like a, it's like a million dollar word there, but um, the student exudes, uh, in other words, the, the work the student does um, or gives off during this period of time if it took her five minutes. Now this is something that can throw some people off. Um, I was really impressed in class. I saw many people did not have any sort of issue with this at this point in the year in physics. It seems like a lot of people are like, oh, I, I get it. I got to convert every so often. It doesn't throw too many people off, which is awesome. If it does, not a big deal. Uh, you'll you'll get there as well. Um, but just realize, oh, our you know our our power formula 
it's got to be in time. So you should look at that and be like, oh yeah, it's got to be in seconds. It can't be in, in minutes. So that's why this careful is there because we have to convert to seconds first. Um, so then from there we can, we can figure it out. The amount of work that was done was 25,000 joules. At this point, you may seem, it may seem like, well, why can't I use this formula? Work equals force times distance. I know my work that would work for here or here. Um, determine the power the student needs. Uh, I don't have power over here. I have power here, so that's why this formula is my winner overall. Power equals 25,000 joules over 300 seconds. Again, this 300 seconds instead of 5 minutes because there's 300 seconds in 5 minutes when we do, go to do the conversion. And again, this formula has to be in joules and seconds, so minutes won't work for us. Divide those two and we end up with 83,000 and 30, 80, sorry, 83, yikes, 0.33 joules per second. Um, it's a, it's a weird unit because normally we think of power in watts. But this joules per second is also okay, right? Because if I look at my formula for power, although we would normally say power is in watts, we could also say, well, work is in joules. We know that time has to be in seconds, so power can also be literally joules per second, which is why Ms. Mardoyan has this answer of joules per second over here, and the reason that I put it as watts is because that's just an, another another version that we could another version of that unit that we could use. A joule, one joule per second is literally one watt. All right, so let's take a look at number five. Um, number five we know is just dead wrong because I'm sitting in here in a in a world's strongest man competition. Um, which I'm far from, but uh, hey, it makes me uh, makes me feel good about myself. So, world's strongest man competition. There's me carrying a barrel that exerts 300 newtons of force over 50 meters. Mr. Pang carries the same barrel, exerts 300 that exerts 300 newtons newtons of force over the same distance, so also 50 meters. I finish in 32 seconds, while he finishes in three minutes. What's the difference in power between the two teachers? We know that um, right away we, we've got time in here so we can use our formula for power because power does have time associated with it. We could use our formula for work as well because we've got a force and a distance that we're dealing with and then just plug whatever we get in here into the power formula. Better yet though is most likely to just say let's take my, my power formula and instead of saying just work and doing this off to the side and plugging it back in. Let's say, well, anywhere where I see a W, I can literally insert an FD. That's what that equal sign means, right? Anything on this side is literally the same as whatever's on this side. Well, that means W is literally the same as FD. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is a little bit nicer of a formula to use then because I don't have to do any sort of like inserting variables for uh, from one formula to another. So I know that the amount of force that the barrel exerted on me was 300 it's competition so we can assume that we're we're using the same barrel for both people and it also tells us in the formula anyway and we're both going the same amount of distance so that's where that 50 is coming from from my my distance over here and then it's asking me to solve for my uh, my power well in order to do that i also need to know my time the 32 seconds that can be inserted directly that's what that's how much time it's taking me to, to uh, travel that distance and then three minutes this one can't be inserted directly and again it says careful you shouldn't need the careful by now but uh, we need to figure out well what is three minutes in seconds there's 60 seconds in a minute it gives us 180 that's why this is inserted for mr. Peng's time there so then we go to do that we're going to end up with 15,000 divided by 32 for me equals at 468.75. And then for Mr. Pang, it's going to end up being the same thing, um, 15,000 divided by 180, and that's going to give me 83.33. And this is in joules per second. Um, if I wanted to put this in watts instead, Remember, that's the, that's the same thing as one joule per second. One watt is one joule per second. So either one of these units would be perfectly acceptable. And this is not asking me for um, 
the, t the two teachers, what their power is, it's asking me for the difference between the two. So we're actually not done until we actually take the difference between the two. And it looks like the difference is 385.42 joules per second or 385.42 watts. Um, so that's how much more Mr. Beatty's got on that chump, Mr. Bang. All right, uh, let's take a look at the last couple on this page. So how much force is exerted when a child has 240 joules per second and they move a wagon 21 meters in four and a half seconds? This one is fairly straightforward if you end up going with this formula for power. We could absolutely use the other formula, the other version of the formula. It's not like an entirely different formula by any means for power. But then I would have to figure out what my work is first and then plug it in here but I'm looking for my force so that may be difficult so it makes more sense to just leave the formula uh, or insert the variables into the formula so we have one nice big formula for both work and power combined so I know the 240 joules per second for my power and again that's the same thing as 240 watts I don't know my force and right? that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for how much how much force so that I'm not so sure of um, we do know that there's 21 meters of distance that's being covered in four and a half seconds. So then from there, we can go ahead and solve. So in order to do that, it would look something like this, 240 times four and a half, right, so that I can get rid of that on that side equals F times 21. So do my 240 times four and a half, figure out what that is, divide by 21, and I'm left with F. And that gives me a force of 51.43 newtons or 51.4 newtons would also be fine. And last but not least, Mr. English applies a force of 55.5 newtons to a cart full of fun physics labs across a distance of 4 meters. How much time is needed to produce 200 joules per second of power? So we actually know the power that we're looking for. We want to produce 200 joules per second or 200 watts. Um, we know that Mr. English is exerting a force of 55.5 newtons. So right there, I've got my force. I've got my my uh, power. Now I want to be able to figure out my time. Well, I also need to know how far he pushes it. And it does tell us across a distance of 4 meters. So that 4 meters ends up there. 55.5 times 4. And then we can... Um, and uh, sorry, and then we can go ahead and do our division, and we come up with a time of 1.11 seconds, or 1.1 seconds would also be acceptable. All right, cool.